presentation of Fox Sports. We are Fox. We are Wisconsin. Number 162, we have arrived here on the final day of the season in St. Louis, Bush Stadium, the home of the Cardinals, where the 2017 will come to a close this year. The Brewers and the Cardinals for game three of the series. Eric Dames, he's back in the lineup today. He wants to play as many as he can. We're going to see Brett Phillips in the lineup today as well. Keon Broxton gets a call in center field. Brewers officially eliminated from postseason contention yesterday and hi everybody we welcome you great to have you with us from st louis thanks for being there all year brian anderson here along with bill schroeder and rock there's a lot to recommend with this ball club this year how about we start with the manager though and craig council outstanding work i mean it started in spring training when he didn't put any limitations on this ball club the way he was able to maneuver his way through 162 games if guys got hurt you know pitching staff depleted the way he used his roster, keeping everybody involved, I think it was a stroke of genius the way he and David Stearns was able to get this team through uh, through the season. Outstanding work. Maybe a weekend away from maybe a manager of the year award, but Craig Council certainly outstanding work this year with this ball club. Well, offensively, the Brewers had some bright spots, especially in the middle of that order. And for the first time since 1982, three players get to the 30 home run plateau, including the big year by Travis Shaw who not only got to the 31 home run number but also 101 runs batted in this year. Well, David Stearns wanted to bolster up the left uh, handed hitters I mean on the corners of the infield I think he was able to do that with Thames and Shaw Shaw the most consistent hitter for the Brewers all season long and Domingo Santana outstanding and you know the pitching really is the reason the Brewers were in this race this long in the second half the offense sputtered at times. But starting pitching, bullpen, outstanding work. Zach Davies, healthy all year, 17 wins. How about Chase Anderson? He spent some time on the DL. But Mr. Consistency, 7-1 and one in the month of September. He was good ex exactly when they needed him. And Corey Knable took over that closer's role in May. 39 saves, tied with the most strikeouts of any pitcher out of the bullpen. What would the Brewers have done without him this year? Well, the Brewers are hoping for a win today. They'll finish the season 10 games over 500. That is the goal and go out of this 2017 season with a victory. All right, let's bring in Sophia Minard. She is our reporter standing by downstairs. And Sophia, tough clubhouse yesterday after getting eliminated, but I think the Brewers are ready to turn that page and ready to take on that burden of expectation they'll have next season. Yeah, and that was certainly a word that Craig Council used this morning talking about his club. Looking ahead to next year, he says, you feel like with what we've done next year, you want there to be expectations. And he says, we're not going to surprise anybody next year. And maybe they did surpass the outside expectations here this year but that started in spring training with that concept of no limits from David Stearns Craig Council he says that started in spring trading it carried over here into the season and took them all the way through 161 games as you said eliminated from the playoffs yesterday but a lot for this team to feel good about Council reflected on what his team has accomplished here this season you know the foundation of the of two years of um you know, kind of what we've worked for and uh, will we'll serve us well moving forward. And, and our experience, as I said this yesterday, and I really believe this, like a, a year older for a lot of these guys, a year smarter for a lot of these guys, a year having gone through an, a period of expectations for, for three months um, is going to really serve us well going into next year. Zach Davies was scheduled to start this afternoon's game 162. He will finish with 17 wins on the season. Aaron Wilkerson will be making his second big league start. We'll preview it coming up next.
Zach Davies was scheduled to start today's game, but as the Brewers were eliminated from postseason possibility yesterday, Craig Council pulled the plug on him, and he'll finish the season with an impressive 17 wins. Davies 17-9 and a 3-9-0 earned run average, just 24 years of age. He looks like he has a very bright future. So the man who will get the start today, this is a big deal for him. Aaron Wilkerson making his second career start in the major leagues. The 28-year-old right-hander coming through the wild and winding road to get to the big leagues. And he is going to take advantage of this opportunity here today. It'll be fun to talk about Aaron Wilkerson today. How about Aaron Judge? He's been a big star in Major League Baseball. Sophia's going to run through some of the big MLB milestones this year when we continue. Wisconsin is brought to you by Miller Light, the original light beer. By Cupy and Abraham, voted best, rated best. Cupy and Abraham, tell them you mean business. And by Menards, save big money at Menards on all your home improvement needs. A beautiful Sunday afternoon here in St. Louis. We are getting ready for the final game of the 2017 baseball season. Game three between the Brewers and the Cardinals coming up here this afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Sophia Minert here at Bush Stadium. The Brewers will finish with a winning season. 85 wins for them already. A chance to add to that here today in the final game against the Cardinals. There were certainly a lot of great storylines on this Brewers team and across all of baseball. Some great headlines as well. We start out in the American League. Aaron Judge, the Yankees rookie outfielder. 52 home runs for him on the season. That is a Major League Baseball rookie record. John Carlos Stan was swinging a hot bat all season long as well. 59 home runs on the season. Still an opportunity for him to get that milestone 60. He's currently tied for ninth all time in a single season. There are some terrific team performances as well. The Cleveland Indians have 101 wins in the season. That's the American League best record. And they've made a notable 22 game winning streak. That's also an American League record. The Indians putting together an incredible season trying to go back to the World Series this year. The Los Angeles Dodgers were the best team in the National League. 103 wins, the best record in baseball. They've already clinched home field advantage for the playoffs. They're looking ahead to the National League Division Series coming up later this week. So we take a look at the University of Wisconsin Whitewater Warhawks playoff picture. This is how it all set up. We'll begin with the wild card games on Tuesday and Wednesday. It'll be the Twins and the Yankees in the American League and then the Colorado Rockies and the Arizona Diamondbacks trying to advance 
to play to the Los Angeles Dodgers. So postseason baseball is coming up here in October. The Brewers will wrap up their regular season here this afternoon in St. Louis, trying to put a bow on what has been a terrific season for the crew. Pulled the string. A swing and a miss. He got him with a changeup. But yeah. Andy, yeah, that's a good one. Ball game. A punch out to end it. Canable strikes out the side. Thames in the air, left center field, and it's off the top of the line. And gone again. Shaw with a big drive out to the opposite field. That one at the fence. Go Santana launches one way back. Goodbye. Garcia with a ball into the corner. And that one is gone. Folks in the ballpark didn't even realize that Garcia had just tied the game. Awesome. Great memories from the 2017 championship season. Orlando Garcia is in a very heated standoff right now a national anthem standoff with Carlos Martinez of the Cardinals who has got the police vest on he's got the umbrella and <laughs> umpires are shooing Martinez away and Arcia wins the <laughs> national anthem standoff yeah, that's the way it always goes <laughs> which one of the two guys the umpires are going to tell to get off the field first right that was funny that's good stuff it's a good one there's been a lot of uh, discussion about the national anthem in pro sports over these last couple of weeks, good to have a little levity with one right here. That was that was fun. Good job, Orlando. All right, ready for baseball here as the Cardinals send out their young, very talented pitching prospect, Jack Flaherty, hard throwing Jack Flaherty. Eric Sogard leads off for the Brewers. And a couple of makeshift lineups for both teams. There's a number of Frontline players that are not in the starting lineup as you see the numbers on Flaherty who is making his fifth big league start and 29 start in his career. He started in double A this year went through the minor leagues. Here he is in the major leagues a September call up made his major league debut that day on September 1st. Well, there will be a great chance for this young pitcher to make the Cardinals rotation next year. 
foul. Yeah, and there's a breaking ball. Sogard checks his swing. Jim Wolf over there, the third base umpire. 2 2 is the count. Cardinals won yesterday. Tough one for the Brewers, giving up a 6 0 lead, their largest deficit, uh, largest lead, I should say, uh, to give up. And for the Cardinals, the largest deficit that they have overcome this season. And that was the loss that officially put the Brewers out of postseason contention. Colorado Rockies are headed to the playoffs now. They'll be the number two wild card team. They'll play in Arizona on Wednesday in the wild card game, a do or die game. Sogar draws a walk and a lead man on here in the first inning. So, Rock, the postseason pieces are all in place yep. now. The Red Sox also clinching yesterday the AL East as you take a look at the Potawatomi Brewers batting order this afternoon. Yeah, it took the next to last day of the season to eliminate Milwaukee. What a fine year it has been for the Brewers. Colorado in. Yeah, the Red Sox win the division, so it's going to be the Yankees and the Twins in the wild card game. That'll be at Yankee Stadium. There's a shot back up the middle and a base hit for VR. Two on for the Brewers to start this one today. The VR, whose playing time has been cut short during this final month, relegated basically to pinch hitting duties, gets himself in the starting lineup today, delivers with a single. A lot of the guys that uh, usually don't get a lot of playing time are guys that have had sporadic playing time. Getting a chance for both teams here today. No playoff implications in this game, so both managers allowing a couple of you know, bench players to get some time. Nice little reward at the end of the season, especially for those who spent the majority of the year in the minor leagues. Guys like Aaron Wilkerson, who gets to start today, Brett Phillips, Jet Bandy coming back from that rib injury. He'll get a chance to start today as well. Eric Dames was offered the option to sit this one out and he actually begged his way into the lineup. He's been hobbled by a right foot injury he keeps fouling pitches off his right leg down uh, lower shin by the ankle. But he asked counsel if he could play he wants to play wants to finish out the season. Good for him yeah. wants to finish it out and you thought that uh, maybe Quentin Berry would get a start in the outfield today. One of the few guys that uh, hasn't had a lot of playing time, not in there. Andrew Susak, the other. I was glad to see Susak get his first big league hit of the year yeah. in yesterday's game. He doesn't have to go into the offseason without a base hit. Thames takes a ball low. Tough to handle this. Yeah, this guy looks, like looks like he is a handful <laughs> behind the plate. Yeah, you got Carson Kelly behind home plate. He's called all three games in his series. Well, Yadier Molina on concussion protocol. But this guy does look like a handful <laughs> to handle behind home plate. Just what you want on the last day of the season, right? Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Kelly enjoying the playing time. Yeah, he doesn't get much with Yadier Molina carrying the heavy burden. And that one's low, so it is the second walk. Two walks and a single here for the Brewers in the first. They have them loaded up with nobody out. I'm sure this young pitcher Flaherty's got some nerves flowing as well, getting a start in the big leagues. Carlos Martinez was originally scheduled to start this game, but like Council did with Zach Davies, they go ahead and pull the plug on their two regular starters. Season over for those two. Right. And he lost a national anthem standing contest. And most importantly, lost that. Well, let's check out the Menards Cardinals defense. Some guys you probably never heard a whole lot of. You got Sierra Bader and Gritzik in the outfield. You got Diaz Mejia on the left side, Valera and Vote Boyd 
At second and first, Carson Kelly, who's caught all three games in this series. The Cardinals' Menards defense for today. Kelly hanging the sides for Jack Flaherty. Jesus Aguilar in the starting lineup for the Brewers. And the cleanup hitter trying to do just that here in the first inning. Aguilar starting his 52nd game of the year. He has the second most pinch hit appearances in the National League this year. Actually, in all of Major League Baseball, only Ichiro has appeared off the bench more than Jesus Aguilar, and he's done great. He's shown a good uh, approach up at the plate, not afraid to you know punch one into right field, and it's had big power coming off the bench. Been a nice find. One of the many surprises that the Brewers have been able to you know find this year. Waiver claim from the, thought, right? the Cleveland Indians. He had 30 homers last year in AAA for the Indians, and if he was a guy who played every day, might be pushing that mark right now. Only has 276 at bats. If you play a full season, you'll get around 600 at bats. So you can do the math. 15 home runs. If you doubled the at bats, be a 30 homer season. Yeah, had a great spring training. Hit the ball well and continued that throughout the. Uh, Major League sees you don't see that very often with a guy that's never really spent a lot of time in the big leagues. Three balls and a strike on Aguilar and a wave and a miss. He threw him a breaking ball on three and one. And he's got a good slider. Curveball is pretty good. His changeup, they say, is one of his better secondary pitches. 93, 94 with the fastball. And Aguilar in the air to right center field. Long way to go over there for Grichik. He'll make the catch. Two runners will tag. Sogard is in. VR to third, and the Brewers strike first That's this afternoon. RBI number 50 for Jesus Aguilar. Good job. So you're just we're getting talking about. I mean, not afraid to shorten up with two strikes, and he's so strong. He kind of one hands it out there in the right field. Hits it deep enough to score the run. Uh, we love round numbers in the game of baseball and 50 looks a lot better than 49. Brewers were able to hit a couple of individual milestones yesterday. Domingo Santana hit his 30th homer of the year yesterday. Travis Shaw crossed over the 100 RBI plateau. First and third one away here is Hernan Perez. Speaking of a guy who's always ready to play ball Hernan Perez the uber versatile Milwaukee Brewer such a key member of the ball club this year. Council cannot offer enough praise for Hernan Perez. He is a manager's dream. Yeah play anywhere. He Put him in the lineup for a couple of days. He's not going to, you know, sulk. Gets his work in and has been very good wherever he has been asked to play. I went around the clubhouse today, shaking hands and congratulating guys for a good year. I said to, I asked Aaron, I was going to catch today, and and he said, I don't know. Go, go ask Counts if I can catch. <laughs> he wants to. Yeah, he does. But I couldn't find Craig. He was must have been in a meeting. Lots of media and uh, front office. Meetings today. Both Matt Arnold and David Stearns are here, assistant GM and GM. Perez, a wave and a miss. That's going to be a strikeout for Flaherty. His first, second out of the inning. Pretty good slider. And not sure if that's a slider or a cutter or something like that. Maybe a combination of both, but able to get Perez on a pitch out of the zone. This would certainly be a day where you would uh, maybe if Craig counts was that kind of guy to have Perez play all nine positions. But Craig's not a believer in that. He's not into the novelty no. parts of this game. Phillips on the first pitch a high drive into right center and this ball is gone. Brett Phillips with a home run. A three run home run for the rookie. And the Brewers with a big strike here in the first inning. That is a four run first inning as Phillips hits his fourth homer of the year in the big leagues.
I'm not messing around. Check it out. Fastball down and in. That's exactly where he likes it. I think that was that cutter. It stays down and in. He loves the ball down there. He just drops the head of the bat on it. Powerball home run count for Brett Phillips. Number four. Drives in three. There you go. Uh, good for Brett Phillips. He needed that one. He was, you know, everybody who plays this game is Broxton with a swing and a miss. You play this game, you're going to have your your strikeouts, your outs. But I think that one really bothered Phillips yesterday. Made the final out. Uh, had a runner at second base. Had a chance to either tie the game with a hit or put the Brewers ahead with a home run. He's a young guy. And yeah, stuff bothers that, you. That, that uh, eats him up a little bit. So his first at bat today delivers a three run homer. Good for him. This guy's going to. He's going to be a factor next year. He has made a major impact here in September. Showing a good, uh, a good swing at the plate. Terrific defensive outfielder with a big arm. You betcha, he's going to be a big part of the plans next year. Keon Broxton on the ground, over to make the play is Valera, and that will retire the side. Good start for the crew today. Looking for a win in the final game of the season to go 10 over for the year. Wisconsin presented by Potawatomi Hotel and Casino. What a beautiful day here in St. Louis and the Brewers get a four spot on Mike Matheny's Cardinals. Cardinals are going to finish with a winning record. They have 83 wins on the year. But for the first time in the Matheny era, they're playing these final games of the regular season with no postseason implications. They took it all the way to the last game last year before missing out. Potawatomi batting order for the Cardinales. You've got Bravik Valera, the switch hitting second baseman, leading off. Mejia will bat second, then Gritchick. Luke Voigt, Harrison Bader, Aledmas Diaz in the middle. Carson Kelly, Magnirus Sierra, Jack Flaherty round out the starting nine. There's Aaron Wilkerson. Aaron making his second start in the major leagues. 28 year old right hander from Waco Texas. What a thrill this must be for him yeah. to get another shot on a big league mound. And again it might not mean anything in the standings but you know the, these guys in both lineups it means a lot to them to get off to a get an opportunity to get a big league start. Finish the season on a high note maybe get a couple of base hits. Wilkerson uh, pitched all year in double A. He was 11 and 4. Grounder over to Aguilar. Wilkerson is there and there is out number one. Well, let's check out your Menards defense for the Brewers here today. Got Thames, Broxson, and Phillips in the outfield. Hernan Perez starts this one out at third base. Might not end up there. He got Sogard VR up the middle. Jesus Aguilar at first base and Jet Mandy. Getting a start behind home plate. Long time since uh, Stephen Vogt wasn't in that starting lineup for the Brewers. He has caught 
a ton ever since Manny Pena's injury. Sogard has been a terrific part of the puzzle this year. That'll be a priority for the Brewers to try to get him signed as well. He'll have plenty of options and plenty of suitors this year. Wilkerson facing Alex Mejia with one away. That is a very strong Bill Schroeder mustache that Mejia is sporting right now. And he's a pretty good defensive player, too. Know a whole lot about him as far as defense goes, but he can pick it, play second short, and he's got the big league stash. <laughs> That's old school, man. That's like right out of the mid 80s. That's right, man. Like him already. He's got some maturing to do to get to your level, Mustachio. He needs but a little bit of gray in there. <laughs> he's up to a good start. <laughs> There's a strike. Yeah, but Wilkerson uh, made one start in AAA. That was in the PCL playoffs. Seven no hit innings against Memphis. Actually, a couple of players, a couple of hitters in the starting lineup for the Cardinals were in the lineup that day. Mm -hmm. Back near us, Sierra, who hits eighth in this lineup. He's in the lineup today for the big league Cardinals. Aledmas Diaz was in the Memphis lineup that night. And Wilkerson thought the seven no hit innings he threw in the AAA playoffs was going to be his last start of his season. Contraire. Fly ball to Broxton. He's there. And there is out number two. And yeah, Wilkerson, not one of those guys that's going to blow the ball by anybody. He's a four pitch mixer. 92, maybe 93, but he's got some movement on it. Keeps the ball down, doesn't walk anybody. Had 143 strikeouts down in the minor leagues. That was in 142 in the third innings and only 36 walks. Biggest question is why did the AAA manager Rick Sweet, who is currently with the ball club, why did he take him out after seven innings? <laughs> if he has seven no hit innings today, he's not coming out. Let you know, it ride. You know, it's all about the pitch count, you know. There's Rick back there behind the netting. Had a good chat with Rick today. He deserves a lot of credit for the player development side as yeah. well. Fantastic manager at the AAA level in Colorado Springs. Time baseball guy, catcher in his big league career. Great council allowed Rick Sweet to take out the lineup card today before the game. He might have a chance to. Uh, Offer up some managerial thoughts for this game. Speaking of the Wisconsin native, or not native, but the Wisconsin resident, A.J. Ellis, catcher for the Miami Marlins, our good buddy, he's managing the Marlins today. Hmm. Don Mattingly is turning over the reins to A.J. Ellis, and he's going to run the the ball game today. Every game in the major league starts at the same time today. Two o'clock central. Can he put himself in the starting lineup? <laughs> I wonder if he did. If is he going to ask himself to pinch hit? <laughs> Player managers were actually fairly common. Yeah. I mean, back in the day, it wasn't such a a strange thing to see. Last player manager, what? Pete Rose, right? Yeah. Joe Torrey. AJ Ellis is the manager, and he didn't even write himself in the lineup today. So. Many feel he would be a great manager in the big leagues once his playing days are over. But Frank Robinson was a player manager when he was with the Cleveland Indians toward the end of his career. Yep. Joe Torre. Yep. Player manager. Lou Boudreaux won a World Series with the Indians as a player manager. LeBron James. No, no just kidding. <laughs> Different sport. Same thing. <laughs> just about, right? GM. 3 2 the count and a swing and a miss and Wilkerson after the Brewers get four in the top of the first a three up three down bottom of the first.
like this, and especially when you can sit one booth over from the Hall of Famer, the legendary Bob Euchre, the Lane Grendel, and top half of Jeff Levering. Two. Oh, the sweet sounds of Mr. Baseball. Yeah. As we head to the top of the second inning. And By the way, I like that. Why don't we just Jeff listen? Doing the Let's just today. have Bob Euchre call this inning. I'm in. Rock and I'll disappear. Enjoy Mr. Baseball, everybody. From the windup. Flaherty deals again, a swing and a drive to left in the corner, and gonna be caught with a diving grab. Sierra, I don't know if he saw that ball all the way or not, but he made a, a tough catch out of what should have been an easy play. I don't know if he saw that ball all the way or not. He caught it. Took a little bit of a Magellan-esque route to it. Magellan-esque? Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. Not direct. <laughs> and the pitch. Strike called on Aaron Wilkerson. Magellan-esque. You like that? Yes, I do. I like it a lot. And the pitch. Two strikes now on Aaron. I do like that. <laughs> Here he is. Bouncer hit to short. Wilkerson is trotting the first. They'll throw him out. Two down, top of the order coming up now in Eric Sogard. 4 0 Milwaukee. Now we get a chance to. Uh, Look at some of these Cardinal youngsters that um, would not have been playing today had the story been a little different for St. Louis as far as postseason play goes. Sogard a walk and a run scored. First time up, takes a strike on the outside corner. This game kind of has a Memphis Redbirds, Colorado Springs, Sky Sox <laughs> feel to it. And the 0-1 delivery is swinging a miss by Eric. I still love coming to this ballpark and playing here and all the history and everything else that goes with Bush Stadium. All the retired numbers, members of baseball's Hall of Fame, the pitch down low on a bender. It's ball one and strike two now on Eric Sogard. That's what's good about this ballpark, the, uh, the dressings that they put up. All the Bush people, former owners of the St. Louis Cardinals, two and two now, a high fastball missing. But all those numbers that have been retired out there and great St. Louis baseball players. Gussie Bush, number 85, that's Gussie Bush, swinging a foul back by Eric Sogarn. That was his security number, too, to get into the mansion. Out at Bush Farms, 85. I remember that. Spent some time out there? Yes, I have. <laughs> Horses have to be taken care of. <laughs> Just make sure you're back for the game. Swinging a roller out in front of home plate. Kelly picks it up and throws him out. <laughs> Inning over. Brewers go quietly, but they still have the lead. Inning and a half. Complete. It's 4 0 Milwaukee. Oh, what a great sound. For 46 years, the sound of summer in Milwaukee. The great Bob Euchre.
in game 162 here at Bush Stadium. And once again, 2018 Brewers season seat holders will enjoy access to a number of exclusive rewards, including such things as a luncheon with David Stearns, a trip down Bernie's slide, a season seat holder pullover, and a whole lot more. Visit Brewers.com slash ticket plans to learn more. Here we go to the bottom of the second inning. Cardinals at the plate. Luke Voigt leading off for St. Louis. Aaron Wilkerson starting his second inning of work. Boy, it's great to hear Bob Euchre, huh? Yeah. We we, uh, we don't get to hear him all the time, so that's the thing. We we get to travel with him. Uh, recent years, he hasn't been traveling uh, with the Brewers much, but we do have access and we get to spend time with him talk to him at the batting cage in the dugout the on the buses inning. and whatnot and it's the second position for Aaron on Paris. Yeah. and so I think the fact that we don't get to hear him call play by play yeah. is that uh, makes it a real treat to be able to, to hear him call the action you know when there's a Brewers game maybe a day game during the week that we're not uh, you know televised yeah, I'll be home listening to the radio Put listening on, to you out yeah. on the boat yeah the horses have to be taken care of. I mean, who, who comes up with that? That's just that's brilliant comedic, you know, stuff. I mean, really. It's a ground ball. Void rolls out. Sogard ends up at third base, by the way. Here, so Sogard moves to third. Perez switches places with Sogard. So I think it's going to happen today. What do you think, partner? It's, it feels like this is. The beginning I mean of an all nine scenario for Hernan Perez and now if he's at second base next inning I, I think, think we got a chance well, I think it's going to happen I mean the only thing is if the Brewers continue to lead this game there's not going to be a bottom no, there will be a bottom of the ninth inning never mm. mind yeah so uh, good I guess I didn't have to uh, convince counsel after all well maybe you could tell HP that you spoke to him. Little tapper in front of the plate. Bandy winds it up, throws him out. Oh, I'll take credit for sure. sure. Got to. Two outs in the inning. So now we need to we need to mark how many balls that Aaron Perez fields in this game. Right? Mm -hmm. He played third base in the first inning, didn't get a single ground ball. He's not gotten a ground ball here. Right. Question is. If you play enough positions, will the ball find you? Well, he's the ball will find him if he's catching. <laughs> That's for sure. That is for sure. There's a strike to Ledmus Diaz. That was the best kept secret of the day. Nobody knew that was coming. Us using Bob Euchre on the radio or no. Oh, Paris. I think we violated about 15 FCC regulations there by nah. tapping into Bob Euchre, but it was worth it. It's worth all the fines at Brent Reeland. Oh, what a play by Perez. Throw to first and not in time. And Diaz is hurt. Diaz is clutching at his left hamstring. The Brewers think they might have an out here. They're going to take a look at this one. What a great play by Perez, though. Yeah, he's something. He's got the arm to be able to finish this play off. Look at the hands. That turns around and throws a strike. I'll tell you. I think they uh, might have had him close enough for a review. Here it is. Yeah, he's out. Oh, yeah. Yep. This is going to go. Nice play by Perez. What's new? I can play anywhere. Well, the ball does find him, and Perez makes a spectacular play. They're going to go to New York for a challenge here, and the umpiring crew. It shouldn't take long. Reviewing this one, Brewers are already walking off the field. Oh, they saw the uh, replay on the scoreboard, and the call is out. Not even close. So well done. That's six in a row retired by Wilkerson and Perez. <laughs> Hustling into the dugout.
start a 4 to nothing lead here as we head to the third. Our scoops from the clubhouse brought to you by Car Soup, speaking with manager Craig Council about the season, and he said, really, that attitude of no limits came from general manager David Stearns. Council adopted that. He said that was something that he started to see in the last 40 games from this team last year. He said we started created that feeling that we could compete with all of the good teams in this league, and so he said it started in spring training. It carried over into the regular season. He said this team has worked really hard to create that and so he said certainly you understand that each season is sacred that was the message was that there is an opportunity in front of these players and he's proud of how they seize those opportunities so he says you know they really taught him something new here this season with that energy and that resiliency that they showed all season long yeah it's been a an interesting watch these guys and you know we're watching them today rock and Sophia hit on a great point with Craig Council as well that they handled the pressure of a pennant race well. They didn't change personality. The manager didn't change personality, nor did the coaches when it got into the heat of the realization they could make it to the postseason. I think that more than anything else is what you like to see. They yeah. continue to play loose and they are extremely loose here today. Well, you don't know, you know, in the batter's box and, you know, in the heat of the battle on the field, what their thought process is, what they're thinking, whether Perhaps, uh, you know, maybe feeling some of that pressure, but, you know, outside the lines, in the dugout, you know, on the planes and buses and batting practice, these guys were the same all season long. And I, I tip my hat to Craig Council for all that. That's got to start from the top. I mean, a loosey goosey attitude by your manager, although he was very, you know, he required a lot of these guys. They made him accountable. And they have uh, had a nice turnaround this year. Now more than anything else Craig Council who I would venture to say is as old school as it gets on how to be a professional baseball player right very little emotion stoic um, shows up every day now he's definitely right. into the analytics on that side of it but as far as a personality on the field Council was very much old school in that regard however. He's let these players have their own personalities. He's not tried to coach it out of them. He, yep. He's let them be as long as they do what they are supposed to do, meaning the effort is there, they're showing up on time and whatnot. Thames flies to center field, and this will be the second out. And that's what I meant by when I said Lucy Goosey. Maybe uh, wasn't a good use of that term, but, uh, you know, he did allow these guys to do, you know, have some fun in that dugout. You know, the gauntlets and all that kind of stuff allowed them to do that. and. But you're right. I mean, he was all business once the game started. You can always tell. You never knew looking at Craig Council in the dugout whether they were up by five, down by five, or tied. He was the same guy. Very consistent. Jesus Aguilar will bat with two away. Council never won to miss out on any part of this game not just what's happening on the field but also the entertainment value of baseball and you know our jobs council spoke to our Fox Sports Wisconsin crew a couple of weeks ago we had a, a season ending crew party and he came up and, and he was so great just the way he he tapped into so many areas of the organization I was talking with him last night and he said one thing's for sure I, that that I'm, I'm proud of as Aguilar lines one to center he goes I'm proud of the fact that we we have a team that is entertaining we entertain people I mean mm -hmm. they play with a a flair there's a dramatic flair to this team as well all those great finishes they've had been on the other side of it too the the gut punching losses are also there but uh, they've had some really terrific moments this season yeah. and they do enjoy one another and it feels like there's a terrific clubhouse chemistry and every game seemed to be you know, come right down to the end right. I mean there's so many close games. They Perez. played some good baseball all season. Perez rolls to short. We'll keep an eye on Hernan Perez. Will he be going to second base next inning. We shall see.
for the Brewers here in the third time now for our deeper coverage of baseball brought to you by Team Mobile. Max Scherzer left the game last night in the fourth inning after stumbling on the mound. He had an MRI this morning which revealed a minor hamstring tweak but Scherzer still able to walk and run and Dusty Baker appeared unconcerned that it would affect him for likely starting game one of the National League Division Series and something to keep an eye on possibly with Erdon Perez here. Detroit center fielder Andrew Romine last night became the fifth player to play all nine positions in one game. So before we saw Perez shift over to short he's now back at third so we'll have to keep an eye on uh, on Perez where he ends up here today yeah feels like the manager might have put a squash down on that yeah. notion to play all nine can't imagine those two did that on their own I that'll mean that'll be interesting fodder for after the game kind of gutsy to be you know just hey let me play short this inning maybe I can convince him Andrew Romine and Aaron Perez were teammates with the Tigers Romine playing all nine last night Perez back at third base. I didn't really think that that would be a great council thing to do. <laughs> the you know, good uh, point of discussion though for an inning. It was fun while it lasted rock. It's like the Brewer season. Ground ball to Perez wherever he goes the ball finds him. Meanwhile. Aaron Wilkerson has retired seven in a row to start this game. Yeah, game might not mean a whole lot to you know as far as the standings goes, but it means a whole heck of a lot to this guy. First ball swinging. Sierra to first base eight in a row for Wilkerson and two gone in this third inning and he'll face the pitcher Flaherty I oh, like the way he moves the ball around I mean sinks it cuts it he's got the curveball throwing a lot of strikes getting a lot of outs early in the count. Clarity only five at bats in the big leagues. Minor league pitcher getting a chance here in September. No balls and a strike. And a swing and a foul tip. Oh, and to the count. Chance for a quick one here for Aaron Wilkerson out of Cumberland University, NAI school in Tennessee. Brewers got him in a deal with the Red Sox last year for Aaron Hill. Different trade than the Travis Shaw deal. That was an offseason deal. Tyler Thornburg was sent from Milwaukee to Boston in that one. Shaw plus three others. Ground ball to Perez again. And that's a one two three inning and Aaron Wilkerson nine up nine down first time through the batting order with a strikeout we head to the fourth inning Brett Phillips will lead off in a three run homer in the first
In the air, center field. Phillips has a great arm. Tagging a third on his way. Here comes a throw. And the slide, the tag, he does. And he drives that one to right field. That is over the head of Winker. Arcia off to the races. He said the Brewers have the lead. He's making a name for himself, whether you call him Brett or Maverick. A three-run home run in the first inning. And young Brett Phillips showing that great arm. That's the fastest throw from the outfield this year. And he hit a 400-foot home run in the first inning well, to cap off a four-run inning. Yeah, you throw a pitch down and in to Brett Phillips, you might not get it back. I mean, that's his hot zone down there, down and in. A lot of lefties like it down there. And... He's one of them. And he keeps playing like this. They're going to be calling him Mr. Phillips. His throw earlier this season in Pittsburgh was clocked at 104.7 miles an hour. Fastest ever recorded by an outfielder. My question was, why not put him on the mound? And he said they tried that often when he was an amateur, but. He didn't like it at all. He was all over the place with his command. Okay, he loved to hit, wanted to play, didn't mm -hmm. want to be a pitcher. <laughs> Phillips with four home runs now in the major leagues, up and down a couple of times. Hit 19 in Triple A. I think he is the one player that has. Given David Stearns, the general manager, some interesting options for the offseason. As the Brewers are in pursuit, they'll probably expand the payroll. That seems to be the notion. Talking to Mark Adonacio and David Stearns, they're going to, at this point, with the way the team played this year, start to make a serious yeah. run and put some pieces together they believe will help get them over the top. Yeah, from what uh, David Stearns uh, has seen this year, he is prepared to do. Some things he thought he wasn't going to be in a position to do. Not quite yet, but that's always good news. Another hit for Phillips, his second of the day. Lead off single here in the fourth. And that means add pieces for a playoff run. Didn't think that that was going to happen quite yet. All good news for Brewer fans. Here's Keon Broxton. Broxton ended up here in the late stages as a platoon player with Phillips. Keon will finish the year in the 2020 club. 20 homers, 20 stolen bases. That is a rare club to be a part of. And Broxton only doing that, or doing that only with a little over 400 at bats this season. Yeah. 49 RBIs to go with those 20 homers. Eighth player in franchise history to go 2020 this season. It's been done 13 times, but by eight different players. Braun's done it four times. Gomez had a couple. Corey Hart did it twice. A lot of athleticism on this Brewers roster and just need the experience, the at bats, you know, innings out of some of these pitchers to figure out who they are as hitters and pitchers. A bunch of them taking a great leap forward this year, including one of the guys that is not in the starting lineup today, Orlando Arcia, as far as a, an, a hitter. Nobody thought he'd be in the 270 280 range at this point. Arcia with three hits last night, or yesterday afternoon, I should say. Finishes the year hitting 277. Swing and a miss. Broxton down on strikes. Hey, save the day for Brewers on deck 2018, set for Sunday, January 28th. This year's event even features a special breakfast with Brewers package. 
That includes an opportunity breakfast with your favorite players, coaches, and alumni before the event. Learn more at Brewers.com slash on deck. Big uh, breakfast at the on deck. I mm -hmm. heard yeah. Tyler Barnes and Rick Schlesinger talking about today. They are here from the Brewers front office. Going to be a lot of executives and players and whatnot can purchase a breakfast sit down and have some eggs and talk a little Brewers baseball from yeah. whatever perspective you'd like to yeah, hear. sit down and watch these athletes eat you'll be impressed. You got the fantasy camp the big breakfast with the Brewers the on deck event. It'll Kick. all be here before you know it yeah. in January kicks off the baseball season. Jet Bandy with a swing and a foul. It's kind Fantasy of the wake up starts call. Uh, January 20th, right? That's yeah, kind of the wake up call for the baseball season. Got a lot of uh, neat events planned at Fantasy Camp. We got the happy hours. We've got the 82 reunion. Yeah, a bunch of the guys from that 82 wild card team. Oh, the 08. The 08. Did I say 82? I'm sorry. 2008. I like getting uh, the idea of getting all those guys together again. That'll be a more regular occurrence as well as we right. start to get into the into the years. Yep, ben Sheets, Prince Fielder, Jason Kendall, got Corey Hart coming. A lot of the guys from that team are going to be down there. Sign up. Phillips at first, one and one to count. Bandy asked for and is granted timeout. Saw a member of that 82 team, excuse me, the 08 team earlier today. Jim Scalen, the hitting coach of that 08 ball club, is here in St. Louis. Had breakfast with him today. He's scouting for the Toronto Blue Jays these days. Great catching up with Ski. Yeah, Ski was the uh, hitting coach for that ball club. Good man, too. Always enjoy our conversations. With Jim Scalen, he was my uh, roommate on the Brewers airplane. My first couple of years in the big leagues, I learned a lot from Ski those first two yeah, years. Yeah, until we started <laughs> to play liars dice on the plane, then you were all by I yourself. Just, I just watched. <laughs> Bandy into center field. That's going to fall a base hit. Reaching down and serving one to center. That's good to see Bandy back there again. He's been coming back from a fractured rib. Hasn't been able to get the playing time that he had hoped for. Got sent down to the minor leagues. Hit the ball well down there and then came back up and had that fractured rib. He was hit by a pitch. And he was swinging the bat well early in the season and then just kind of hit the skids and got sent down to the minor leagues. A good piece of hitting that time by Jet on a slider down and away. Able to base hit into center. Second. At bat for Wilkerson trying to bunt the runners over. I'm still convinced that the best singular at bat of the season was turned in by Jet Bandy. The, uh, the game against Zach Greinke and the Diamondbacks. It's a nine pitch at bat. He ended up with a double, drove in a Three runs. Bases were loaded, yeah. Big spot. Big Two moment outs. for him. Two outs. Yep. He's a funny guy, too. Boy, what a. He's gotten a little Bob Euchre tendency in him. He's next level funny. His impersonation of uh, Brent Suter. <laughs> the best. He was working on Anthony Swarzak on Friday. He was actually asking Swarzak to show him. How he pitches so he can master it. Wilkerson strikes out. Second out of the innings. Runner still at first and second. And back to the top of the order. Eric Sogard. Two on two away Sogard has reached and scored got on via the walk in the first inning bounced a little tapper in front of the plate in the second inning.
Sogard into center field. It's hit well, but right at Bader. And that will retire the side. Brewers get a couple of hits. Strand two. It's 4 0 Milwaukee. We head to the bottom of the fourth. Four nothing lead and Aaron Wilkerson stepping into the spotlight here in the big leagues his second major league start he is retired nine in a row to start his game today nine up nine down seven ground ball outs already and just 36 pitches to get through the first three innings so Wilkerson Wilkerson will carry on top of the order coming up Bravik Valera the switch hitter will lead off. The other thing you like about what Wilkerson has done only one fly ball out that was second hitter of the game. Everything on the ground has one K as well. That was Gritchick in the first inning. And strike one from Wilkerson. First base umpire Greg Gibson coming down to chat with the home plate umpire and I think couldn't quite hear what he said but he's on his way to the clubhouse and we will play on here so operating at a three man umpiring crew yep do this in spring training they're used to it. One ball one strike on Valera Wilkerson and that one's in the air to center field Broxton will make the catch and there is out number one that's ten in a row retired by Wilkerson little issue with the sun right there. Boy it was brutal yesterday wasn't yeah. it that three o'clock local start outfielder staring right into that setting September sun especially in right field Domingo had problem with one in that big inning for the Cardinals they scored four runs out in right field. Ground ball Perez cuts it off and two quick outs for Wilkerson here in the fourth inning. Wilkerson had Tommy John surgery in college a senior year in college and was not drafted had a long recovery a couple of years to recover from that injury thought his baseball career was going to be over at least anything resembling a baseball career that would end up in the major leagues he was actually working at a grocery store in Texas working in the frozen food section in Waco Texas. Recovering from his surgery. 
And then he got back. He started feeling good. The arm healed up. And then he went to independent ball. Red Sox ended up signing him out of independent ball. Very similar story to what Rich Hill did once he recovered from shoulder surgery. And then the Red Sox gave him a chance. And he took advantage of that chance. And then when the Red Sox needed a third baseman last year, they weren't willing to part with some of their better prospects, but the Brewers had an eye on Wilkerson and thought he might be a good fit. And he has been. And here he is in his second big league start. He has retired the first 12 in a row. Wisconsin Lottery reminding you to please play responsibly. And by Toyota, let's go places. Beautiful Sunday here at Bush Stadium and a reminder that leading into October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Fox Sports Supports is proud to team up with the National Coalition Against Domestic Violence. We support their vision of creating a world in which domestic violence is not tolerated and where victims and survivors are supported and empowered. Find out how you can join the conversation, foxsportsupports.com. Jonathan VR leading off for the Brewers. We play in the top of the fifth inning, last game of the season, as we turn the calendar to October 1st. American League wild card game will be coming up Tuesday. That'll be on ESPN. Wednesday, the National League wildcard game on TBS. It's a bouncer by VR. Fair ball inside the bag. Out number one for Flaherty. Guys are swinging early today. And one gone here in the fifth. As Flaherty giving up the four runs in the first inning. Has given up three hits since that time, but no more damage. Here is Eric Dames. The division series will begin Thursday. FS1 will kick off the coverage on Thursday with the ALDS. Right now you've got the Red Sox and the Astros matching up. That will start in Houston. And then you'll have the Indians and the wild card winner, either the Twins or the Yankees. Those will start Thursday. TBS will have the NLDS, Cubs Nationals, and Dodgers versus the wild card winner beginning Friday. A little scare for the Nationals, right? That uh, last start from Max Scherzer came out of the game yesterday, right? They say it's just a cramp, a right hamstring cramp. Fly ball into center. Over to make the play is Bader for out number two. 
hamstring problems for Jake Carrietta as well. They have bumped him back to at least game three in the NLDS. Playoff uh, setup is in place now. Rockies Diamondbacks will do the wild card on Wednesday night. Yankees Twins Tuesday night. And then those will be the matchups for the NLDS. And who will make it to the championship series? Who makes it all the way to the World Series this year? Care to make a prediction? Can you tell us first of all where you're going to be? Is that I uh, cannot. Is that uh, you will know tomorrow? Public knowledge. You will find out tomorrow. I'll I either be wait. going to Washington D.C. or te Los Angeles, California. Will you text me? I mean, I can't. I'm not going to be able to sleep tonight. I'm sure it'll be all over Twitter, Rock. It'll be. You won't be able to escape it. It'll be major news. <laughs> Man, it's going to be so much fun. It's going to be a great postseason. Some good teams going at it this year. Three different teams this year with 100 wins. How about that? Yeah. Crazy. Astros, Indians, and the Dodgers have the best record in all of baseball. They secured the best record overall. So if the Dodgers do end up in the World Series, they will have the home field advantage. They have set a Los Angeles baseball record for wins. Los Angeles Dodgers. They've got Kershaw all lined up to pitch game one. It'll be either against the Diamondbacks or the Rockies. Swing and a miss. Aguilar strikes out. And the inning is over. Three up and three down in the fifth. Aaron Wilkerson watch continues. He's back out for the fifth. Every night, every device, watch every out of market regular season game live. Plus, get a free subscription to At Bat Premium. The number one app for live baseball, blackout, and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.tv for details. Aaron Wilkerson retiring the first 12 he's faced, facing Luke Voigt, the St. Louis native. Voigt in the lineup today, playing first base, big power hitter. Wilkerson is the story right now. Working through the first four innings, he has two strikeouts. And just about everything else is on the ground. There are two fly ball outs, two strikeouts, and then the rest are ground ball outs. A bonus start today for Wilkerson. It was supposed to be Zach Davies. But as the Brewers were eliminated from the postseason yesterday, Council pulled the plug on Davies, calling it a season for him and a fantastic season it was for Zach. And Wilkerson gets the call, and he's making the most of it. Brewers get four runs in the first, and he's cruising through the lineup. 
the first four innings. All right, doing a good job keeping the ball down early in the count and all speed pitches have been on point. Three balls and a strike on Voigt. He's late on that fastball. Up and in. Voigt attended nearby Lafayette High School, which also produced Ryan Howard and David Freeze. Played his college ball at Missouri State. One of his teammates at Missouri State was the son of his current manager, Mike Matheny's son Tate, was a teammate. Bouncing ball, big chopper over to third. Perez, low throw, dug out by Aguilar. And there is out number one, 13 in a row, retired. I've been talking about the fastball getting ahead in the count, but how about the hook? I mean, watch where these pitches end up. He hasn't left anything up in the zone, everything down around the knees or below. Outstanding work, a jam shot on the curveball. There's the only hanger that he's thrown. That was that 3 2 pitch right there, and he got his ground ball. Good work by Aaron Wilkerson with the curveball today. 28 year old rookie, second big league start as he faces. The speedy Harrison Bader, one of the Cardinals' top outfield prospects. Two quick strikes on Bader. Wilkerson threw seven no hit innings against Memphis on September 7th in the Pacific Coast League playoffs. Memphis is the Cardinals' AAA team. They ended up winning the PCL championship this year. That start for Wilkerson on September 7th earned him a spot in the big leagues. First outing, first game in the majors was a three up, three down inning. Pitching out of the bullpen, he actually finished a game. And then he got a start in Pittsburgh. And there's a swing and a miss. Wilkerson strikes out Bader. Yeah, once again on the curveball. Good pitch for him. Pitch out of the strike zone ahead in the count. Yeah, Bader's had a tough time with that slider off the plate. Slider curveball, and that's Swarzak hung him one yesterday, and Bader able to get that big base hit to give the Cardinals a lead yesterday. Two outs in the inning, and here is Greg Garcia, and he lands a curveball for a strike. Garcia's first at bat, he came in for Ledmus Diaz, who left the game with a hamstring injury. That was the closest thing to a hit the Cardinals have had back in the second inning. Perez made a great play. Perez is playing shortstop that inning. A backhanded pickup, he made a strong throw. It was actually called safe on the field. And then they went to replay. On a challenge, and it was overturned. Yeah. Got him by the length of a cleat. Perez has since moved back to third base. One and two, the count. Oh. Misses inside. Two and two. And the way Craig Council has managed this year, I mean, kind of anticipating, he figured, you know, Diaz is going to hit one in a hole like that. I need a guy that has a good arm this inning. Maybe so. It's short. There's a called strike three. A one, two, three inning. Now four K's. Aaron Wilkerson. We have a developing story in the big leagues. Five no hit innings with four punch outs for the 28 year old rookie.
Milwaukee Brewers baseball on Fox Sports Wisconsin is brought to you by Miller Lite, the original light beer. Beautiful Sunday in St. Louis and the old courthouse. One of the great landmarks here in downtown St. Louis. Brewers are up four to nothing. Don't forget, Major League Baseball postseason is almost here. Only thing that matters, other than Aaron Wilkerson today, is now the October ALDS and NLDS. You got the wild card games coming. Thursday, only on FS1. You can find the ALDS beginning Thursday. Fireworks and everything. Hernan Perez will lead off for the brew crew here in the sixth. Flaherty is out. New pitcher is Brett Cecil. Signed a multi-year deal with the Cardinals prior to the season. Had a great year with the Blue Jays last, last year. Perez rolls to third and a 5-3 put out for the first out of the inning. The first appearance for Brett Cecil in this series. Last pitch against the Cubs. That was back on the 28th. A scoreless inning. He is a guy out of the bullpen that will work multiple innings. He's done it six times this year. At the plate presented by Wendy's. Brett Phillips with a three run homer in the first. Had a single his last time up. And he's on the first pitch. A fly ball to left. This is playable for Sierra. Magnirus Sierra makes a catch for out number two. Two quick ones here. Jack Flaherty went five innings, five hits, gave up four earned runs, all coming in the first inning. Yeah, pitched pretty well after that, though. A couple of hits is all, and was able to find his command. He walked two in the first, both of them scored. Had a 28 pitch first inning, ended up with 81 pitches through five. Giving the ball to his bullpen. Brewers continue their trend of scoring in the first inning. And they added four more to the number here today. Biggest differential in baseball, outscoring their opponent in the first inning. One and one to Keon Broxton, two outs in the frame. And a swing and a miss. One and two now. Broxton is 0 for 2, a ground out and a strikeout. Looking for his first hit, and that one's in the dirt. Well short. 3 and 2 on Keon. Cecil deals and a swing and a miss. Roxon strikes out on a changeup. Three up, three down for the Brewers in the sixth. All eyes on Aaron Wilkerson. Perfect through five. He's coming back out for the sixth.
retiring 15 straight batters to start his afternoon. Closest thing the Cardinals have come to a hit came back in the second inning. Hernan Perez had moved over to play short that inning, and our Badger Mutual Insurance play of the game. It was a dandy. It was called safe originally and then went to a challenge, and it was overturned. Perez with ball in hand sprinting to the dugout before they changed their mind. An excellent play by Hernan Perez. He's played third base in all of the other innings in this game. That was the one thing he, he played short. First ball swinging is Carson Kelly and a pop up to VR out number one and 16 in a row retired by Wilkerson. Yeah. Well, you start thinking about it. You know once you get not so much through the sixth inning you get through the seventh inning and all of a sudden you're starting to pop in your mind that you know this is something that could happen. I've never been part of a perfect game. No hitter though. Now Rock caught the only no hitter in Brewers franchise history. Juan Nieves back in 87. Wilkerson. Facing Magniris Sierra one of the two players that was in the lineup when Wilkerson pitched in the PCL playoffs on September 7th. Sierra actually had a hit in that game that was after Wilkerson had been removed after seven no hit innings. Sierra was one for four. There were only two hits in the game. And the Brewers triple A team won that ball game five nothing. Wilkerson hit lead off that day. Played center field. Aledmus Diaz was in the lineup as well. Diaz was in the original starting lineup today. And that ground ball that Perez made the play on that was the play that Diaz was injured on. Mm -hmm. Had to leave the game with a hamstring injury. There's a called strike three. Wilkerson hits the edge and that? a punch out his fifth <laughs> strike out of the game. Well, he's painting with the thin brushes today, is he not? I mean, that's a 3 2 pitch. He has not allowed a base run and puts that one right on a dime on the outside corner. Check out Bandy's target. Doesn't even have to move the glove. 91 miles an hour and gets the call. Better get that call. Mike Matheny is going to go to the bench here. Jose Martinez will pinch it. Had a key double in yesterday's game to drive in two. Part of the Cardinal comeback, and he lines one on the first pitch, a base hit. The first hit of the game for the Cardinals. That breaking pitch, not a bad pitch either. That pitch was down and away. I don't even think it was a strike. Able to reach out, big tall right handed hitter. There you see that curveball, pretty good one. Just right off the end of the bat, boy, we've seen a lot of those yeah. in this series for the Cardinals. A lot of jam shots off the end of the bat. First hit of the game. Well, 17 in a row retired for Wilkerson before the Cardinals finally put a man on with two outs. Now back to the top of the order, Valera. And he swings at the first pitch. Fly ball to left. And Thames will haul it in to end the inning. So it's a one hitter through six. He's still got a shutout on the board. He is pitching a gym today. Aaron Wilkerson.
Cardinals on the board with a base hit. They guarantee the best seats for the 2018 season by placing a deposit on the Brewers' season ticket plan. 20-game plan started just $16 per ticket and include the best seats at the lowest prices as well as access to a number of exclusive season seat holder benefits. Learn more at Brewers.com slash ticket plan. Aaron Wilkerson just giving up his first hit of the game after retiring 17 straight still has a shutout going through the first six pitch count in great shape and pitching a dandy here on the last day of the season trying to make sure that this Brewers staff remembers his name going into next year had a fantastic season at double A you root for guys like Aaron Wilkerson here's John Brebbia. 50th appearance of the season for the Cardinal reliever. He was beardless when the season began. <laughs> he's got good, at him. He's got good stuff. He throws hard, has a good slider. Brebbia, one of those guys you figure that the Cardinals are going to rely on next year. Chad Bandy will lead off, then Wilkerson, then back to the top of the order. You figure the Cardinals are going to be very active. On the uh, free agent hot stove circles this offseason, they have some big position player targets in mind. <laughs> Be a trade or free agency. A couple of trade targets. You're hearing rumors like Josh Donaldson and John Carlos Stanton. It's going to be very interesting. I'm sure the Cardinals are going to want to. Have a conversation with Anthony Swarzak, who will be a free agent at season's end. Neil Walker will be a free agent as well for the Brewers. Bandy, a little soft liner that is caught by the shortstop. He's going to throw it anyway. No, got him out on both occasions. Didn't need to. Mejia. With the 6 3 put out on Bandy, one away in the seventh. Wilkerson, 0 for 2 today. He's looking for his first big league hit. Swing and a foul tip. One ball, two strikes. Rebia. And there's a liner in the left center right at Sierra. Had him well positioned. How'd they know he was going to hit one there? I tell you, hit that one nice. That was a good swing. He only has four at bats in the big leagues. Yeah. That's some serious analytic work right there by the Cardinals. <laughs> How'd they do that? Two gone now, top of the order. Here comes Sogard. I think everybody's surprised he pulled it and hit it that hard. <laughs> and most pitchers they play around toward right, right? Not right. me, Aaron. I was expecting something great right there. You ready? Mm hmm. Sogard in the air to left field long run Sierra and he's there to make the catch to end the inning. Well heavy hearts today one of our colleagues in the hockey world Dave Strader longtime play by play man in the NHL passed away this morning after a courageous fight against cancer. He was 62 diagnosed with cancer in June of 2016 great voice of the Dallas Stars. Losing his battle with cancer earlier today and our thoughts and prayers with the family and friends of Dave Strader.
shutout innings only one hit allowed that came last inning with two outs great numbers across the board for Wilkerson only 68 pitches and here we go to the seventh now with the Brewers leading four nothing all four runs coming in the first and it'll be Mejia Grichik and Luke Voigt who started for St. Louis shadows now becoming a factor as they creep out toward the mound. 44,787 the announced attendance today. Only the Dodgers drew more fans than the Cardinals this year. The Cardinals at 3.45 million. Just Something, came up short of the three and a half million mark. Every year it seems like for the Cardinals. The Brewers finished 10th in all of baseball this year in yeah. attendance. Over two and a half million. That's a quite a feat for Milwaukee. It's the smallest market in the major leagues. Great job by the fans coming out. It's always more fun when you're there. Yeah, year after year, Brewers fans show up. One out on a 5-3 grounder. Those ground balls keep coming for Aaron Wilkerson. Randall Gritchick now he's 0 for 2 with a couple of strikeouts. Wilkerson has five punch outs thus far. Ten ground ball outs. And Gritchick has chased a couple of high fastballs for his two strikeouts today. That's where you want to get that guy better get it up there though. One ball one strike and Gritchick takes one high two and one Wilkerson with one away in the seventh drops one in for a strike that great command of the curveball today yes, he has thrown at any time he's thrown a curveball to get an out on a three two pitch today. Two and two. And Grichik sends one deep to left. That is way back. Light tower power, they say, about Randall Grichik. And he hits one a mile high and a mile far for his 22nd home run of the season. And the Cardinals are on the board for the first time here in the seventh inning. Nip curveball hung that time. You know, and a few mistakes he's made with that pitch. You see it up there didn't have much break on it and Grichik with that kind of power is able to launch that one a couple of punch outs and a home run one away here is Luke Voigt now to face Wilkerson a couple of ground ball outs to third base. Now one of the things to keep in mind here today if it does end up in a safe situation for the Brewers Corey Knebel is sitting on 39 saves for the year. Not that 40 saves is dramatically better than 39 but imagine an opportunity to get to 40 mm -hmm. for a guy who didn't even enter into the closers role until mid May <laughs> first six weeks of the season he was pitching. In a setup role for Neftali Feliz. Right. Well, you gotta, yeah, you got to figure if it uh, gets down to that in the ninth inning, you're going to see Knebel at some point. That's the one guy. You talk about guys who have made strides this year. He has been at the top of the list. Turned himself into an all star this season, Knebel. He looked pretty stressed out over there with Anthony Swarzak. And Josh Hader. Well, you get to around the eighth inning. He's not going to be sitting like that. <laughs> he is trying to find a shady spot, I think. And they're running out of shady spots in that Cardinal bullpen.
Nice day today. You don't need much shade. Corey says, I'm up. I think he spotted himself on television. Helping a setup man up. I need him. Brewers need a win today to finish the season 10 games over. It would be their 86th win of the year. There have been years when 86 wins get you into the postseason. Just not this season, right? Carlos Torres beginning to get loose. Case Wilkerson cannot get through this seventh inning. He's got one out. Cardinals have a run in on a Gritchick homer. Three and two to Voigt and a high fly ball right field. Phillips is back there with the glasses on. He's got it for out number two. And need the glasses out there today. Hey, today's time of the game winner, Lakeside Bar in Stevens Point. If they call the Brewers by 8 o'clock tomorrow morning, they get 40 tickets to a Friday night game in the Miller Light beer pen next year. It's all for courtesy of the Tavern League of Wisconsin and Miller Light, our last one of the season. Mm. When you put it that way, the uh, Tavern of the game. Bummer. How do you feel the year has gone on the Tavern of the game? I fly ball to right another stellar season <laughs> Phillips is there and a one two three inning rocks been the half of them three quarters his, his best year yet. <laughs> <laughs> Resiliency all year. Um, we came back from a lot of tough losses and tough stretches, and we're able to right the ship again. And uh, just a lot of positives to take forward um, moving into next year. A lot of close games and and a playoff race that that'll help down the stretch. I guess is what you say. Next year, um, a lot of young guys that went going through it for the first time this year. That I think would be a positive experience going forward. <laughs> Travis Shaw talking to Sophia before the game today. What a year he had. First year he gets a real chance to be an everyday player in the big leagues. And Travis Shaw responds with 31 homers, 101 RBIs. He played a great third base. This guy was a first baseman most of his minor league career. Moved over to third base and performed very well over there. And Shaw's going to be continuing on in, in Milwaukee. His daughter Ryan is at Children's Hospital of Wisconsin and 
Uh, that whole situation that has gone on, if you don't know the story, Travis's daughter was born with a heart defect and multiple surgeries right after she was born in June. It's just been a very difficult year for them. VR flies to center field for out number one. But I'm guessing Travis Shaw's wife must be a superstar. Right. Because uh, what they've been able to endure this year and the care that Ryan has gotten the baby. Um, Craig Council told me yesterday he feels and having talked to Shaw that the baby's in the best place that uh, the baby's been all year so far. Mm -hmm. And there's more surgeries to come, but we will gladly welcome the Shaws into the Milwaukee community in the offseason. So let him know you're thinking about him. He's on Twitter and he said he couldn't be happier with the way things have gone uh, in Milwaukee this year. The care he's gotten and the outpouring of support that he and his wife and yeah. his family have gotten this season. Yeah, serious stuff. Travis. Or rather, Eric Thames, that's a fair ball. That's a ground rule double. That just slipped inside the line. A little hidden from our view here in the booth. I wasn't sure. Had a foot inside that left field line. And Thames able to go to the opposite field. Now, Contra can bring it. I mean, make no mistake. I mean, his average velocity is near 99 miles an hour. He's got some sync to it. He's uh, been pretty impressive. Brewers saw him. A couple of nights ago. One of the hardest throwers in the game right here, Sandy Alcantara. Alcantara has thrown the fourth fastest pitch in the big leagues this year. On average, Alcantara, as Rock mentioned, 98 8, so only a role as Chapman. Joe Kelly and Walker Bueller have faster fastball velo averages. And he's got movement to it. It's not straight. That's some sink. Rare combination to throw that hard and get that kind of movement. It's all about throwing strikes, though. Long and lean and that buggy whip action. And that the delivery looks effortless, right? It doesn't look like he's really putting forth the effort. It's all you know, standing tall and that leverage that he gives himself. Straight over the top pretty much. A nasty slider in there for a strike. He has closer stuff, no question. Look how long his fingers are. He can generate so much spin with that ball. Reminds me of Doc Gooden. Almost wrap completely around the baseball. Right. Spin rate. Aguilar fouls it away. Had a good cut at it at 98 miles an hour. Jesus has a hit today. Has an RBI. You know, from what we've seen this year, in your impression, what do you think average fastball is these days in the major leagues? I think it's around 93. 93, 4. Like that, I yeah. mean, it's getting up there. I mean, usually when you talk about something. an average fastball, you're talking 91, 92, right? That's a soft thrower these days. I would say it's higher than that. 94. I mean, these guys can bring it. I know there are more pitchers who throw with more max effort to generate that kind of velocity. The way they measure velocity has changed over the last few decades as well measuring out of the hand now at its fastest point high fly ball to center got some carry to it on the run back is Bader and this ball is up and out of here Jesus Aguilar with a two run home run and a Brewers fan gets that home run souvenir from Aguilar that's number 16 Three RBIs today for Aguilar gives him 52 on the season. How strong is he, right? I mean, with two strikes, a slider from Alcantara that was out of hand. That's one hand, folks. And just trying to put the bat on the baseball. Look how hard, far he hits this ball. That is one strong man. Jesus <laughs> Aguilar. I'm telling you. Who wow. can do that? 
Amazing. Just a, a handful of players in the big leagues can do that. We've seen him now three times in this game that two strike approach. He's got a sack fly, a base hit, and now a home run. He's trying to put the ball in play and he hits it a ton. Getting the seeds dumped on him. About to get some water down his back from Santana. Or over his head. <laughs> I think he started it, didn't he? The he, water thing. <laughs> I think he did. <laughs> Bouncing ball to third. Nice pickup, Garcia. And we'll take care of Perez for the second out. They're getting back at him. <laughs> See the it's all about the combination. If the seeds come first, no big deal. But when you go water first, seed second, now you have stickables. Yeah, now you got seeds stuck to your head. He's got them off. Trying to keep an eye on him. The security uh, gentleman down there just kind of trying to stay out of the way. <laughs> Aguilar hit that one 417 feet. Left the bat at 101 miles an hour. Speaking of exit velocity, Rock. Stanton today, the Did ground ball. Did you see that? 122. He hit a ground ball that left the bat at 122 miles per hour. Yeah. Set a major league record since they've been tracking these exit velocities. Got him leading off today. AJ Ellis managing the Marlins had him leading off. Yeah, getting as many at bats as he can to see if he can get to 60 homers. And so Ellis, as you would imagine, says, You're my leadoff hitter, Giancarlo. Hit the ball on the ground. <laughs> That's what they've been telling leadoff hitters for years. Use your speed. <laughs> 122 miles an hour. How about playing an infield position? Who did he hit that it coming right at yeah. you? I don't know. I got to see video of that. I've only read the account of it. I don't know the direction of it. I'm guessing it was pulled. There's a called strike three. Phillips is out, and the inning is over. But the Brewers are rolling today in the final game of the season. Jesus Aguilar with a two-run homer. He's got three ribbies this afternoon. He is such a funny guy, hard worker. He is a pro's pro, and we are always honored to have Jeff on our road games on Fox Sports Wisconsin. He's a good man. Yep, hard worker. He does a good job pre and post. And uh, you know, I like his uh, his mid game 
little anecdotes, his little uh, nuggets. Always brings those interesting nuggets. All right. Saw the changes with Quentin Berry taking over in left field, moving Phillips over to right. Thames is out of the game. Carlos Torres is in the pitch facing Garcia. So the end of the day for Aaron Wilkerson, who goes seven innings in this spot start, gives up just one run. That tremendous work. Got to feel good about that being his final start of the year. Only two hits allowed for Wilkerson. I assume there's nowhere else he can go pitch. Double A, triple A, big leagues. Made to march. He's well deserving of a big offseason rest. Down in Texas, Aaron Wilkerson. Garcia batting for the second time. He was one of the five Wilkerson strikeouts today. And Garcia walks to start the inning. Miller Lite, what's on tap? Nothing tomorrow. We're looking at next season. How about we open the year in San Diego? You got to come join us for that. San Diego on March 29th. That's going to be perfect. Home opener is April 2nd against the St. Louis Cardinals. Finish up in interleague play next year. How about that? Where do we finish? I didn't get that. Detroit. Far. Oh yeah, in Detroit. Home, home oh. against Detroit. Interleague play. So the Tigers are coming to Miller Park to end the year, and hopefully the Brewers are going to be tuning up for the postseason. You like that? Or in Champagne? Maybe before that Detroit series. Pop the corks. Tigers are going to have a new manager. Brad Osmus stepping down. Terry Collins stepped down today as manager of the Mets. He resigned. He's going to stay in the organization, though, according to reports. That's a good man to have in your organization. I thought Terry Collins did a great job as the Mets manager. Yeah. Took him to a World Series. Always enjoy spending time with Terry Collins. He's one of the great guys. Tells it like it is. I was glad to see David Wright stand up and uh, support his manager Terry Collins publicly there had been a lot of sources news concerning Terry Collins meaning quotes from people who did not want to be identified but were you know talking about disruption in the clubhouse losing the clubhouse I hate reading things like that and uh, David Wright who's in that clubhouse every day stood up for his manager. Anything that uh, starts with unidentified sources, yeah. dismiss it. Put your name on it if right. you feel that strongly about Just it. Just dismiss it. Holds no water. Own it. <laughs> Torres in a 2 2 count with Carson Kelly. Got a runner at first, Garcia. Trying to get through these last six outs and finish the season 10 games over 500, 86 and 76. That's sure why Torres is throwing over to first base. Two and two the count. Jeff Grayson told us we're going to be hearing predictions from our analyst in L.A. What do you say, Rock? What do you like? I'm calling Dodgers Cleveland. OK, that's a great call. It's not really going out on the limb at all, but Dodgers Cleveland. And Cleveland's going to win it this year. That long drought, 1948. Base hit by Kelly. First two have reached in the Cardinal eight. How about Cubs Nats? How do you like that one going down? Uh, we got to go Nats, I guess. If Scherzer's healthy and he's able uh -huh. to pitch, I mean, I like that starting rotation. That offense for Washington is nasty. Harper's back. Yep. Gio Gonzalez, and Strasburg, Scherzer. What do you got? 
Uh, I'm going to re recuse myself from. You don't do that? <laughs> oh, I see. You're, you're the be, analyst. You're going to be going somewhere. You're going to have to deal with the fans, right? <laughs> Although, do you know where you're going? Uh, I can't wait till tomorrow. Are you going to text me? No, no. I'll just. Uh, you'll you'll see it. It'll what be, time? You, you'll get a notification. What time is this coming? I, I don't know. I don't know. It's breaking news. I can't wait. What I'm really hoping for is there's enough warm weather in October after the postseason that we can get out and play some golf. That's we as that's in who you talking top about. Top on my wish list. You and your buddies. <laughs> it's an open ended invitation for Rock to play golf. Go Rock only plays golf with his wife though. And he's such a gentleman when he plays golf with his wife. That's really what's amazing to me. Yeah. Because when you play golf with us, it can get you remember a that little far uncomfortable. Back? You remember that far back? <laughs> There's a bouncing ball going to be tough to turn two here. And they only get the one out as Sierra reaches out of fielder's choice. One of my lowest golf <laughs> moments ever happened right here right in here. St. Louis. Gateway National. You're right. That was about, what, 30? 30 yards in front of a little canal. Yeah, and on uh, the other side of the canal is a huge green. Huge green. How many balls did I put in that canal? I think five. Five or six. Went all 10 cup from 30 yards away. And then I fired one about 100 <laughs> yards. <laughs> uh, I think uh, Mike Matheny is asking the umpires to look at this. Okay. So we are going to have a challenge on the play at second base. And they are saying know. VR had his foot off the bag, which yeah. the replay shows he does. Yeah, it looks like uh, he did. No reason for it. You're not going to turn a double play. This is a mistake that you just cannot make. I mean, you're not going to turn two on this guy, Sierra. He runs well. I'm not sure he has the ball in his glove when he leaves the bag. And that's a no-no. Well, this one is going to be overturned, I imagine, and we're going to have bases loaded with nobody out. And suddenly, the Cardinals, as they were yesterday, are knocking at the door after the Brewers opened up a big lead. Mm. Yeah, there's really no excuse to make a mistake like this. I mean, this is not a double play ball. You stand on the bag, you take the throw like a first baseman. Well, just lack of concentration. I mean, you got to get the out. Yeah, for over a hundred years, that was an automatic out. But Jonathan VR is well aware that this is the replay era in Major League Baseball, and those are the kind of mistakes that continue to keep VR as the Brewers' enigma. Great talent, but make mistakes like that, you just can't do it. Bases loaded, nobody out now. That'll go down as an error on uh, Jonathan VR, allowing the man to get to second base. E4. Paul DeYoung coming off the bench. He's their best home run hitter. Matheny will take his shot at it right here. 6 1 game. DeYoung has had a breakout year. Everyday shortstop now, typically hitting third in this lineup. He's got Wisconsin ties, does the young. Family owning a resort, an area lake, Lake Tomahawk. Spends a lot of time in Wisconsin every winter. Big ice fisherman is the young. Mm -hmm. And he's had a great year. It's a fascinating story about the young written by Derek Gould of the St. Louis Post Dispatch. And I didn't realize this. The young was a biochem major, wanted to major biochemistry, was accepted into the University of Wisconsin, was going to Wisconsin, which has no baseball team, by the way. And at the last minute decided to go to Illinois State and was a utility man at Illinois State, was an all conference player as a utility man catcher finally got into the lineup at second base 
never dreaming of what he's doing now in the major leagues. 25 homers, 65 RBIs as the everyday shortstop of the Cardinals. A swing and a miss. Torres strikes him out for the first out. A high fastball probably chased another pitch out of the strike zone. With one more homer, and you understand why DeYoung was trying to launch one out, one more homer would have become the most, the fourth most homers among rookie shortstops in National League history. It would have tied Seeger's mark from last year at 26. So he's going to finish with the fifth most by an NL rookie shortstop. Yep, he did try and launch that one, that <laughs> last pitch, that fastball. Big hack out of the zone. That worked into Torres' favor. Now Valeria, or Valera, I should say, 0 for 3 today. Popped him up, foul territory, playable for Perez. Two outs in the inning. And Torres a step away from getting out of this inning. It'll be Mejia now with two gone. Bottom of the eighth, Brewers lead 6 1. Last game of the year. Been a pleasure calling these games for you all season long. Thanks for being there with us, our great crew here. Passionate baseball fans we have working Brewer baseball. Today's game being produced by Brent Reland. Produced the national game yesterday as well. Our other producer, Dan Keener. Terrific producer in his own right, also. Our directors, Adam Bryant III. Directing today's game and this series here in St. Louis. Also does the Bucks. And Renardo Lowe and Mark Vittorio. Great group of folks that we work with. A lot of fun. Give each other the business quite a bit. <laughs> They can't wait to get away from us. Right. All the ribbing they take. One and one to count, two outs. One and two now. James Stewart, our pregame producer, back in Wisconsin. Thanks to Lisa Rodriguez doing great work running the tape room as well. She travels with us quite a bit. Lisa and Doc and Tim. I met our buddy Matt LePay who was filling in uh, admirably for you and you know, Craig Kishan did the same. Matt LePay's having a nice run over there with the Badgers so far this year. Good win for Bucky yesterday. Yeah. Matt got to raise his voice a few times in that win over Northwestern. Yeah. But I don't buy the fill in bit. It's a job share. No filling in. Oh, that's what he keeps saying. I know he's wrong. I try to correct him of that. Yeah I do too. But. Great to have Matt and Craig Kishon and Augie, Davy Nelson, Jerry Augustine, our pregame and postgame talent, along with Rock. Brian Mikologic and Graphics, Dave Trout, father of two now. Yeah. And what will we do without Sophie? Who's that? How great is she, right? <laughs> She's worked a lot this summer. Sophia Minard. So we're having her down getting the reports and doing pre and post. Emmy award winning reporter. Ground ball in and out of the glove of Torres. He'll recover and throw him out and the Brewers get out of a bases loaded jam. 6 1 Brew Crew. We head to the ninth inning in game 162.
last inning of the season. Powerball home run leaderboard. This is where it's going to stand. Eric Dames, Travis Shaw, Domingo Santana all now out of the lineup. Dames was the only one to play today. 31 homers apiece for those two. Santana hit 30. First time since 1982 the Brewers have had three players with 30 or more home runs. Only the second Milwaukee Brewer team to ever accomplish that feat. Broxton still has a chance to add to this. Keon will lead off here in the ninth inning. Broxton to start it, then Bandy. And then the pitcher spot after that. We'll see where Council goes. Sam Tui Valala on the mound for the Cardinals here in the ninth. Keon looking for his first hit of the day. Hitting 220 with 20 homers. He is at 49 RBIs. Needs a long ball right here, Rock, to yeah. get to 50. That'd be nice. All about those round numbers. Yeah, good way to finish the season. One ball, two strikes. That's in there. A call, strike three. Going around thanking all of our crew. Certainly want to recognize Craig Kishon and Sophia. All the great work they have done this year. All the terrific reporting that those two have provided our Brewers telecast this season. You'll see them on Bucks coverage as well. Sophia's back there somewhere. All Hollywood with those sunglasses. Stand up, Sophia. Oh, oh that's okay. Oh, wait BA. a minute. She is. <laughs> I am. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't have Ben Baker next to me today. <laughs> Great job, Sophia, this year. You're a fantastic reporter, and uh, I can tell you from our perspective, and I know Brewers fans appreciate this as well, your ability to speak Spanish and translate for us has brought a new dimension to this ball club. The, the Spanish speaking players the Brewers have feel so much more comfortable with you around. That's been fun to listen to all year and getting to know their personalities. Well, thank you. And I have to give a lot of credit just to, you know, the players and the coaching staff themselves just for always being available, always being accommodating, um, you know, and they, they have really opened up to us, I think, to all three of us and to our whole crew. So very grateful to them just for always being gracious with their time and sharing their perspectives. So, you know, without without them opening up to us, we really have no stories to tell. So I'm certainly very grateful to them for that. What is your Brewers Live post game? order list right now who are you going after following the game today if the Brewers win well I think we've, we've got a few candidates we got Aaron Wilkerson we could go to Brett Phillips we could go to Jesus Aguilar so I guess maybe maybe we should uh, put it to a poll oh, I think not you just handle it like you've been doing all year fly ball to center and oh, what a catch by Bader he turned that one into a nice catch didn't he Did you see how far he went back it's all about, about where the editing begins. You're right, I know. I mean, that's just a terrible read on that baseball, but he ends up making a play. He's going back about three steps, and uh oh, I better come in. And a nice diving catch on a play that should have been routine. If you start it there, this looks like a gem. Yeah. He is one of the fastest players in the Cardinal organization. And he needed all of that speed to run that one down for the yeah. second out. I'm not sure why he thought that was going back to the wall, but able to make the catch. He's fighting that sun. The cloud cover now, but it is so bright here in St. Louis. It's got to be the toughest sun field in the late afternoon in the big leagues because the sun basically sets right behind home plate. Mm -hmm. And these guys are all just staring into that brightness. Got to go back to the flip downs. Not going to happen though. Those help a little bit, but the flip downs, you don't have problems losing it in the sun. It takes work though to get the use of those things. How about the slide there? That's a pretty significant. That's slip and slide territory. That's a 10 foot slide from yeah. Bader. You got to be really moving fast. And streamlined. 
Some of us couldn't do that. That's a good point. The speed in the boiler really cuts into the slide distance. You talk about a divot. <laughs> All right, here we go. Bottom of the ninth. Slip and slide from Bader made it a 1 2 3 inning. baseball all season long on Fox Sports Wisconsin presented by Potawatomi Hotel and Casino coming to the finish line here of the 2017 season ninth inning 6 1 Milwaukee and the Brewers are going to give the ball to another rookie Taylor Williams who had a great year in double A coming back from Surgery elbow surgery missed two years great to see him on the mound. He'll be a real factor to make the ball club next season and another guy that's coming up from double a Biloxi at 309 earned run average in 22 games. He made 14 starts down in the minor leagues a September call up last pitch against the Reds on Wednesday. Alberto Rosario will lead off for the Cardinals. And the hard throwing Williams deals strike one 96 mile an hour fastball. Rosario to start it. Hoping for a clean inning. Good job by Torres getting through a mess in the eighth inning. Bases loaded nobody out. He retired the next three hitters. Yeah. Rosario's hitting for Gritchick here. Richard Homer his last at bat. Matheny feeling like maybe that's a good way to end the that's season. That's a great right? way to end the year. Hit a Homer on your last trip to the plate. There's a swing and a miss. It's a strikeout. Bandy's got to secure it at first. And out number one. Well, one gone here in the ninth. How about we listen into the great Bob Euchre one more time, Rock, for right. another out? When they get up here at the end of the year and you know spend the final month or a couple of weeks here anyway he's one of them. I mean he's absolutely living his dream. He'd never pitched in triple A before he goes straight from double A to the big leagues this year and he's coming out in there and he's throwing fire with his right arm. He's um, I mean talking to him today and uh, the pitch it is a curveball and it's on one Luke Voigt is the batter. He is. One of the most appreciative guys, if you will, about being here, about getting the call and coming up here to pitch. And down low and away and looking forward, you know, next spring, he said, man, I can't wait. One ball and one strike. I think he's really excited to have a season where he's going to have the gloves off and he can just go out there. He's not going to have to take it easy at all. 
One ball, two strikes. Here he comes again, and that one's a little bit high. He can run it up there in a hurry. He's at 97, 98, and probably getting better. Surgery, the Tommy John surgery, as you move on and stretch out, and things start to get better and better. 2 1 delivery, and here it is down low and away, and it's 3 and 1. He's going to find that command. That's been his biggest thing coming back from the Tommy John surgery has been the command, but got four solid pitches, all nasty, throws hard. He's going to be one to watch. Three balls and a strike. Here he comes again, and that one's a little bit high, and he walked it. All right, strikeout and a walk. And here is Harrison Bader, who robbed Jet Bandy of a base hit on that misjudged fly ball that he finally caught up to. Bader today has bounced out, struck out, and fly to right field. But yeah, all, all this um, all this storyline around the Brewers and where they finished up and what everybody thought they were going to be has turned out to be a pretty good story throughout the year with the uh, the deference, the pitch a little bit higher as an up a strike on the outside corner. With the addition of a lot of these guys that have come from the minor leagues, deals from other organizations, deals that were made last year and the players who were involved in those trades and are finally here now and our fans get a chance to swing in a bouncer hit foul up along third our fans get a chance to see these guys when you make those trades for the the big league players and it's for a prospect which sometimes you don't get to see for a couple years but we we get a chance to see him this year yeah I mean sometimes you trade for a guy who's 18 years old and you hope you see him in five years but the Brewers are seeing the, the fruits of all of those deals from the 2015 season already. Two strikes, here he comes again. Bader down low and away, and a good save by Jet Bandy. Yeah, I that's that's the part of it sometimes that fans get a little upset with when one of your favorites, a fan favorite, is, and there's been a few, Gomez and Jonathan Lucroy and Mike Fires and the guys who, you know, had a fan base in Milwaukee. And when they move on and you don't get a chance to see the players come to the major leagues for a year or two or whatever it may be. Um, sometimes it's a little upsetting for fans. Runner goes down low and a win. There'll be no throw on a defensive indifference. Two balls and two strikes now. But uh, you're always hoping. It doesn't always work out. But you're always hoping down the line that you know one of these guys is going to turn out to be a big league player. Two balls two strikes. Williams deals and a swing and a foul tip and Jet Bandy hangs on another strikeout for him. I think one of the great things that's going to come out of this 27 uh, it's always season. great to hear Bob Euchre and yeah. that would give you a little taste of the great radio team the Brewers have here Jeff Levering Lane Grendel all sitting in with Mr. Baseball Bob Euchre and uh, appreciate those guys letting us tap in a little bit plus it means that we get to sit here and listen like fans yeah down to the last out of the season now Kent Sommerfeld the producer and engineer over there on Brewers radio runner at second two outs in the inning and a ground ball and VR has got it and this is going to do it the season is over it is a Brewers win and the Brewers will finish the year at 86 and 76 and the 2017 season is in the books been a great thrill rock always a pleasure to sit yeah. by you my friend you too and I can't wait to hear where you're going next week <laughs> good job man it's you always too. great you too, buddy. greatest job in the world and uh, what a nice season it was this year well handshakes for the Brewers the crowd here in St. Louis acknowledging their team as they doff their caps and the Brewers get the victory on the final day of the season to finish 10 games over 500 had a three run home run for Phillips two run home run by Jesus Aguilar and we will wrap up this 2017 season knowing that this ball club has a chance to do something special next year and maybe for years to come under the leadership of that man Craig Council we'll take a break Brewers live will be next